Hi guys and welcome. In today's video I'm doing a remake of this full length polyester velvet jacket. Uh, it's very simple, it's got a round the neck, it's got a band going around the inside and that is just all top stitched on the outside. There is side splits in this one but I'm not going to be putting side splits in the remake and then it's got lovely long sleeves on it. So it's a very simple, um, elegant looking jacket. Uh, and I'm just going to show you now the fabric that I'm going to be remaking it in. Now this is the fabric guys and this is absolutely beautiful. It's the same type of polyester velvet but it's a crushed velvet one. So you've got your light and dark colours to that. Uh, but the important thing is when you do it working with velvet is to make sure that you get your pile going the right way because there is shading difference if you was to get it wrong. So you've got a smooth pile and a rough pile when it comes to velvet. This is one end of the fabric. This is the other. And you can just see there how dark it is going one way and how light it is going the other way. And I'm just deciding which way I want the pile to be um, when I'm wearing it. But that's what I mean when I talk about the difference in the colour when it comes to velvet got the, the jacket laid on the paper wrong side facing up so because I've got this is a band that's going to be put on the inside so it's just the outside here that I'm going to be leaving a little bit of seam allowance to join that band onto but I'm going to be adding two inch on the bottom because I want it two inch longer remember and also the width of this hem so let me get me ruler so I've got it inside out this is the back so you've got your front piece laid flat underneath and the bottom now obviously the paper is not wide enough to do the full piece of the back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out but what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it to the neck so I've got the center and the same with the bottom then I'm going to cut this piece so it's going to be cut on the fold so I get me one piece so again at the bottom I'm going to be allowing two inch and the seam allowance. Right, so when you're doing your sleeve, your outer part of the arm here is the bit that needs to go on the fold. So I'm going to place that just on the edge of the paper, because like I said, that's just going to be the fold. On this bit here, I'm going to be allowing the seam allowance. And I'm going to do that to about an inch. I think that's about an inch. Turn it the right way, a little bit that way, and I'm just going to mark that across. And so I've got the, the fabric folded in half, and making sure that that's all flat and smooth, and now I'm going to simply 
lettuce. Right, so let's get this cut out then. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that over because obviously I've got me, this is the front. is the back piece folded the fabric underneath is folded placed on the fold now what you need to make sure is with this is that the fabric underneath and on top where I folded it is flat and smooth and there's no creases in it that when you're going to cut it your patterns off right so that's all lovely and smooth underneath and I've kept pulling it and pulling it so I'm not wasting much of that fabric there so I've pulled it as tight as I can to this side uh, because obviously I'll be able to use that for something else. So let's get this cut out. So I'm on the bit now where I need to get the band cut and it's this band that's going to go on the inside of the jacket. And you can just see here on the back neck, it's a curvature. So it just slightly curves that. So where this is here, I'm just trying, because it's dark, it's, you're struggling to see it. I've allowed the seam allowance where it's going to be joined to the coat. And then I've marked it. So it comes there. The seam is here. I've allowed a little bit of seam allowance there and a little bit of seam allowance here. But this is the curve that I'm going to be. And then I'm going to measure it two inch in, because with that seam allowance and this, it comes to two inch in total. Mark it round two inch and then I've got my shape for the back of the neck. So where that edge is there, I'm going to go to where I've marked it there. So I've marked there two inch, I've marked to the end. I'm going to go up to this end where I've marked it. Two inch again. Mark it to the end. What I need to do now, guys, I need to cut the pieces that's going to be on the inside of the edges of the, of the coat. Now, it's shaped this, so you can't just cut two straight pieces. So I've laid the jacket on the fabric and I'm just going to mark round it and then I'm going to mark two inches to allow for the seam allowance. Right, so I'm just going to start marking them round where this is curving. And I've made sure again that the pile's going to be the same way. So I'm just going to put that there because I need to mark it two inches now all the way up there. So what I'm going to do now with this, where's my piece gone? <laughs> is I'm just going to flip that over. And really cut that out. And then I've got both sides of the front. Just check that out. So there you see, 
because I've flipped it over, I've got both sides now of the inside uh, strips cut out. Day two, assembling the jacket together. I keep calling it the jacket, but it's a coat, isn't it? So what I've done first of all is the bit that's going to go all around the inside of the jacket, I've literally just joined those at the seam there. On the shoulders, I've stitched those on the flatbed, but I'm going to be overlocking them. So I've got those three pieces because once you've once you're doing a remake, and all your pieces are cut out, you've got to stand back and you've got, you've got to decide how to put that item of clothing together because it doesn't come with an instruction uh, sheet. So you've just got to work out how to do it. Now, this job, what I'm doing, straightforward, three pieces, two for the sleeves and the band that's going to go on. It's a simple make, so it's very easy to work out how to put it together. So I'm going to go to the overlocking machine now. I'm going to overlock both the top collars I'm going to overlock on the outside, wait a minute, inside piece of this because I'm not going to do the other side because I'm going to do that on the flatbed because it's all going to be inside so you're not going to see it so there's no point in wasting all the cottons that you're going to use on an overlocker. This is the outside, this is the inside, it's the inside that I'm going to be overlocking. So I'm going to come around all of that. Put that over there and then let's get these seams just neatened on the overlock. So I'm going to clip this in position because this is going to be the next job that I'm going to be doing. Okay, let me get my needle in the middle of it. So you're putting the right side of the fabrics together at this point. But first of all, I'm going to put the seams together. Put it under the machine and i'm actually just going to run the edge uh, down the edge of the foot and that is going to be my guideline so you're making sure that both your edges are together as you're going Right, so what I need to do now then, I need to stay stitch on the inside. So let me just get, here we go. Now the hem's gonna have to be cut down a little bit there because it's just a little bit too short. If you can, uh, this is just a bit too shorter than the hem, but that's okay, because I did make it longer, didn't I? So what I'm gonna do here is, I need to make sure that underneath that this seam, this seam here, is lined to this side so it's going in the direction that the band is I'll put that let me just put that so i'm going to try and get it to run it so that on the inside of the foot there that's what i'm going to be lining it up with so i'm going to keep going underneath and making sure that in fact you can feel actually that it's laying flat that
So what I've just done there, guys, is I've literally just gone and pressed this down. So what I'm going to go around now is I actually bought these, bought them a while back, and they're actually for doing hems on either trousers, jeans, or doing curtains. So I'm just going to keep that flat for me. I'm going to go all the way around and just put one of these ever so often. I'm going to aim to sew on this, down the centre of the overlocking. Just check in there that it's all laying flat. Oh, look in there. And then I'm going to turn it the other way. I'm going to double stitch that. So when I've got the stitching, I'm going to run the stitching on the outside of my machine foot. So what I'm going to be doing at this point, guys, is I'm going to actually just be clipping my sleeves into place. So I'm going to get the sleeve, fold it in half at the top. These have all been overlocked round, by the way. And then I'm going to get the centre of that and put a clip there. So the same with this one. the centre and then put a clip there and what this is going to do is when you're pinning it to your your top you know you've got the same amount in the front as you have on the back, back of the sleeve just measuring that there because they are exactly the same so I'm just going to clip that to the seam And then I'm going to get those edges together there, clip that, I don't need to clip that, and then clip the end together there. Okay, let me get the other side. So a good back tack there get the overlocking together there making sure that it's lying on top of each other true take the clip out at this point Stitched in position. And I'm going to 
gonna get the sleeve. I'm just gonna clip where that the sleeve join is and I'm just gonna clip just that in position there. So I've come to the bottom of the sleeve where the where the hem's gonna be on it. I'm gonna stitch up there. So I'm laying on top of each other. sure that my seams are open here because then there's going to be no bulkiness and I'm just going to give a good back tack under there I'm going to do the cuffs on the sleeves so I'm just going to turn them over let's get my little I'm going to do them to the inch that I said so I've set my sewing gauge up and I just need to I'm going to clip that all the way around the stitching whether it be overlocking or whatever I'm gonna just tuck that inside so it's inside the seam there we go and I'm gonna aim to stitch in the middle of the overlocking like I always do I'm going to turn it to the right side and then I'm just going to run round it again so I've got between needling. The row stitching that I've just got I'm having to the outside of the foot so the outside of the foot. So you can just see there the twin needling which gives you your professional finish on the, uh, the end of your cuff. I've laid the coat flat on my table so I can just see and it's this one piece. Somehow there is a lot of difference to the other two. So I'm just going to cut this across. And 
and then that piece there you can see there where they're just not meeting I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm just going to fetch this down level and then I'm going to turn it to the front and just see how that looks. Okay, so let me just turn that over. Let's have a look at, you can see there that that's not bad, is it, at all? I'm going to measure that seam against this seam and just see if it needs adjusting. Okay, so that uh -huh, is there. There's that 42.3. That's 42.3, so that's good. So all I'm going to do now then, I'm going to go and overlock across the bottom. And I'm going to do that off camera because it's just a plain, simple, straight run. And then we'll take it to the um, flatbed and get it stitched down. It's all being overlocked. I'm going to simply keep it an inch up. So I've got my sewing gauge again. Let's get this hem stitch then. Once again, stitching straight down the centre of the overlocking. so we can get that twin needling done. Once again, I'm running this stitching on the outside of the foot with my guideline. Once again there you can see the twin needling so that is finished so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get a press and then i'm going to try it on i'll try the original one on and then i'll try this one on and uh, we'll see how it looks so this is the original coat that the pattern was took off and i altered what i altered was i didn't put the split in the new one and i put pockets in let me try that jacket on for you so this is the finished new coat guys all done, ready to be wore out. The only different spec that I've done is that there's no split in the in the side. It's just a full length, unlined velvet coat. And the colour is absolutely beautiful. Love the colour of it. Now the fabric that I made this coat with a, a lovely young lady was giving it away she used it to cover two tables on a wedding day and she was uh, basically advertising it on marketplace said it was too good to throw away and that would anybody like it so uh when i read it i sent her a message saying is it still available to which she said yes it was and i went and picked it up the same night put it in the wash when i got back and there was two pieces which is four just over four meters each piece because i'm making me eldest daughter one next week to the same spec i just need her she's coming up so i just need to, to try mine on because she's a lot smaller than me and then downsize it so it fits her but uh, i'm really pleased with the end result so i hope you've enjoyed this little re remake with me it's been a very easy make to do i think i'd like to do some more as well you know in different different colors but um, this colour is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I've just put a simple black top underneath it. I would wear it with a skirt, with smart trousers, with my jeans. So many options. So thanks for watching, guys.
Till next time, see you soon. Bye for now.